When The Hills debuted on MTV in 2006, the show was framed as a real look at a group of friends who moved to LA to chase their dreams. But seeing is not always believing. Now that 2019's reboot, The Hills New Beginnings, has made its drama-packed debut, it's the perfect time to reveal the made-up storylines from the original. Let's just do it and get it over with. One of the most infamous on-again, off-again relationships on the hills was between Audrina Patridge and Justin Bobby Brescia. Patridge just couldn't seem to quit giving Brescia chances, even when he gave her every reason to walk away for good. I just keep waiting around for you to make a decision and I just I can't about, keep this, waiting. This. But in 2015, Brescia told Complex, Were we like boyfriend-girlfriend? No, we weren't. We worked a lot. We had some moments. We spent a lot of time together. It was We were mostly friends for the most part. Basically, even now, Brescia refuses to admit that he had any sort of real relationship with Patridge. He just left me, he's gone. Really? Yeah. I'm sorry. Seriously, I'm done. But Brescia's description of this supposedly on-off relationship fabricated for TV doesn't completely match up with Audrina's version of events. She told Entertainment Tonight in 2016 that as far as her relationship with Brescia goes, it was a fine line of real and fake, because we definitely had real feelings for each other and what we were going through was real. Audrina added, What we were going through in real life, we didn't talk about on, can on the show. A key season one storyline on the hills involved Heidi Montag dropping out of college to pursue a career in public relations, much to classmate Lauren Conrad's dismay. Well, I want to do PR. That's like my ultimate goal. I want to be like the fun party PR girl in LA type of thing. But in a 2016 interview with BuzzFeed, Montag revealed that her entire job at Bolt House Productions was in fact a lie. It seems that Montag's involvement with the company was a mutually beneficial relationship, but not an actual career. By the way, that promotion Montag supposedly got over her co-worker Elodie Otto in season three? That apparently was totally fake too. Good for you, I mean. As long as, you know, appreciate it as much as I would have. I do. But no hard feelings. Heidi said, I definitely did not get the promotion over Elodie. She really worked there and I pretend worked there. So it was obviously a pretend promotion for her to be upset about. That whole plot was scripted. Yet that very same year, Montag gave an interview that seemed to suggest her job was real. She told InStyle, Working at Bolt House was such a fun experience. It was great holding the clipboard and feeling like you're running the line. They're one of the biggest event companies in the world, throwing multi-million dollar parties. Despite her conflicting stories, holding the clipboard doesn't sound like much of a job description. Spencer and Heidi welcomed their first child in 2017, but when they were filming The Hills, one of their most memorable storylines involved Montag hatching a plan to get pregnant despite Pratt's opposition to it. I took a pregnancy test. I'm not pregnant. But Heidi told Entertainment Tonight in 2016 that she wasn't actually trying to manipulate her husband into having a kid, claiming, Yeah, I would never do that. I think that's the worst thing any human could do. I don't like tricking or manipulating people or things like that. I think that's a really important step, and I was way too young. I wasn't even thinking about kids then. So there you have it. The baby drama was a sham cooked up for viewers to enjoy, and it totally worked. Everything's fake before you know it. Kristen Cavallari, the star of Very Cavallari and Laguna Beach, joined The Hills in season five as Lauren Conrad's replacement. Understandably, Cavallari joining the cast stirred up some instant drama, especially when she took an interest in Audrina's on-again, off-again boyfriend, Justin Bobby. However, according to Patridge, there wasn't much truth to all that romantic tension. In an interview with Entertainment Tonight, Patridge recalled filming a party scene and saying, You guys, I am not with Justin anymore. Kristen, have him. I want nothing to do with this. Like, I've moved on. Patridge went on to allege, Producers locked my car in the gate and took my keys. I called my lawyers and told them they won't let me leave and they want me to do this fake fight and it's just going to make me look bad. And I'm with someone else and I'm not obsessed with Justin and it's making me look like this crazy person. Whether or not these extreme filming techniques are really how things went down, it appears that neither lady was as into Justin Bobby as producers would have you believe. When asked if she regretted any of her on-screen romances, Cavallari told Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, 
I would say Justin, but I never really dated him. So. It was fake. Yeah. One particularly memorable moment on The Hills Season 5 took place when Lauren surprised Heidi by turning up at her wedding to Spencer. What made you decide to come? I just realized, regardless of anything that happened, I'm just, I'm, I really am happy for you. But Conrad's unexpected appearance at the nuptials was not all that it seemed. As Montag told BuzzFeed, I know Lauren did not want to come to my wedding, and I was shocked when I saw her. They must have paid her a lot to come. I think producers had both Lauren and Kristen Cavallari there to kind of pass on the baton and show that Kristen was the new head in charge. However, Conrad tells a different story about that wedding. Speaking to Us Weekly in 2016, Conrad claimed producers literally locked me in the basement with two security guards and wouldn't let me leave. And I was like, you can't keep me here. I was throwing a fit. Producer Adam DeVello pushed back, telling the mag that Conrad, quote, might have felt locked in, but she was not. At the end of season one, series star Lauren Conrad was given the opportunity to spend the summer interning in Paris with Teen Vogue. However, Conrad ended up turning down the internship, thus forever becoming known as the, quote, girl who didn't go to Paris. Lauren didn't go to Paris. She's going to always be known as the girl who didn't go to Paris. Lisa Love, the editor who offered Conrad the position, revealed that Vogue editor-in-chief Anna Wintour was actually the one who coined that infamous nickname. But according to co-star Whitney Port, the Paris internship wasn't as glamorous as it was made out to be. Honestly, when in your life are you ever going to get the chance to do that again? The midnight tour of Paris? Probably never. Considering Port was selected to travel to the City of Lights in Conrad's place, Whitney told Vogue, It wasn't an ideal situation, but I thought, OK, this is good for me because I really was pursuing a career in fashion. I thought it showed that I was down and determined to do this. But the trip wasn't the summer-long internship it was sold as on TV. I always have kind of seen myself more as like dealing directly with fashion, more so yeah. than just being like, you know, behind the scenes of a magazine. Whitney told E.T., I wasn't really ever hired by Teen Vogue. Cavallari, who has since reinvented herself with jewellery brand Uncommon James and the reality show Very Cavallari, is probably the most outspoken cast member from the show. In 2019, during an appearance on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, she expressed relief that Port had also revealed some behind-the-scenes truths. But I can tell you, most of my stuff wasn't real. <laughs> so right. I'm just hoping yeah. that more people are finally coming out saying that stuff isn't real because for the longest time it was only me. Right. So thank you, Whitney. <laughs> Cavallari also told Splash, The producers were really crappy to me. I felt like everybody was against me and manipulating me, and that forced me to be a bit. It's gonna be like this! It's on! But she seems to have since made peace with the role she was playing. In 2018, she told Parade that producer Adam DeVello asked her if I was cool with the whole the bitch is back slogan. And I was like, yeah, if I'm going to do it, let's do it. I knew what I was doing, you know, and, and it worked, obviously. If Very Cavallari is anything to go by, Kristen is much nicer in real life than The Hills made her out to be. Despite the fact that viewers were busy shipping Lauren and Brody Jenner, it turns out that their fledging relationship was totally fake. I feel like we're so distant. Can I over? Yes, you can see it over. <sighs> much better. Conrad broke the news in 2016, telling Us Weekly, we were always more friends than anything. He was always very sweet to me, and we enjoyed each other's company. But I think it was one of those things where producers really wanted us to be together, and we both knew that we didn't really have that kind of chemistry. Jenna concurred, revealing to Yahoo... Yeah. We would literally, we'd film a scene of us kissing or being in this lovey-dovey scene, and then right after, we'd be like, cut, and it's like, all right, hey, good to see you, and we'd we'll go our separate cut. ways. But the tryst with Conrad wasn't Jenna's only fake relationship on the show. He told the outlet, The hardest part of it was having to live that fake reality. The not being able to say, I didn't hook up with Jen Bunny. I didn't hook up with Audrina. I didn't hook up with any of these girls. Looking for chicks here too, whatever. When Spencer arrived on the show in season two, he was portrayed as Heidi's possible love interest, who just so happened to also be hanging out with Audrina. I think it might be kind of awkward. Because Heidi and I, I don't know what's going on. But we have some kind of some kind of beef. In an interview with Broadly, Montag recalled the moment Pratt arrived at a club with Patridge, who supposedly wasn't on speaking terms with anyone thanks to rumours that she'd been hanging out with one of Lauren's exes. As Montag told Broadly, Patridge showed up with Spencer and we were like, please. Just like that, season two's drama was born. However, Patridge claimed
claims that all of the friction between her and Montag was fabricated and she never had any romantic interest in Pratt. She told us weekly, Oh God, no! I did not have history with Spencer and this was one of the things that really upset me and this was when I started distrusting the producers. Although we'll never know for sure, it seems some clever editing helped create a connection that was never really there. Season 6 of The Hills ended with the reveal that Brody's final scene was being shot on a studio lot, a not-so-subtle nod to the show's fake storylines. But things could have gone very differently because Lauren actually returned for the series finale and filmed an alternate ending. Hey. Where you been? MTV broadcast the special cameo years later, showing Conrad waiting at home for Jenna as if they were now living together. In reality, the secret girlfriend Jenna kept referring to throughout season six was actually Avril Lavigne, who he was dating at the time. While Conrad previously told E she had, quote, no plans to come back, producer Adam DeVello wasn't going to give up so easily. He told Entertainment Weekly, it's something I always wanted for the finale, and it just took a lot of persuading. I was relentless and I bugged MTV until they gave in. But when all was said and done, MTV didn't follow DeVello's vision, the one where Jenna and Conrad are cohabitating. But thanks to the internet, Conrad's totally fake cameo is now immortalized forever. The most polarizing character on the hills was definitely Spencer Pratt, who admits that he played into his villainous storylines as the show got more popular. I say things that I feel. But according to Pratt, he couldn't be more different from the erratic, sometimes violent, consummate dirtbag he personified on screen. Heidi's other half told in style, we wanted to have a show that people watched, so we did all this stuff that made us look like the worst humans on earth. When the cameras were off, I was a complete gentleman, opening doors and going to the movies and cuddling. They needed a bad guy. I stepped in there, took the hit for the team. One of the show's producers seemed to confirm Pratt's version of events, telling Refinery29, I feel like he knew the character the show was portraying, and he played into it, and it helped him and the show out. Now I feel bad if any of that is ruining anything he wants to do moving forward. Even Pratt's now estranged sister Stephanie described her brother as, quote, reality TV genius. If you guys could go back, would you do it all over again? Oh, I would do it so much better. <laughs> Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite celebs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.